Kids, Petaluma Pete, and we are at a party today, aren't we guys? Yeah! Uh, this, is a, this is a Christmas party, and we're going to learn a new word, and that word is friends. Can you all say friends? Friends! All right, so if you want to know more, come with us. We're done. <laughs> Speaking of friends, kids, please round up your adults and bring them to this screen right now for a non-profit commercial brought to you by Mrs. Santa Claus. Before we start watching Petaluma Pete's first holiday special, let's all learn about one of Petaluma's best friends of all time, called PCA. Ready? One... Two PCA is a nonprofit public access television station providing community, educational, and governmental programming. Their mission is to promote freedom of expression, provide access to communication tools, and to foster the use of media. They maintain a neutral space for all members of the community who want to participate in the development and practice of media democracy, media literacy, and media empowerment. I just like the fact that when you tune into channels 26, 27, or 28 through Comcast or AT&T UVerse, the commercials go away. And I see people I know and I watch programs that matter to our local community, and that's a very cool thing. 26 is the public channel, kids, with locally created programming, viewer-sponsored programs, and on-air bulletins, comedy, tragedy, you name it. 27 is the educational channel with Petaluma school meetings, educational training, graduations, and the PCA radio project. 28 is government channel, kids. City council sessions, planning commission meetings, county board of supervisors, reality TV at its best. here and we are in downtown Petaluma today and we're all dressed up because it's a very special occasion and the word we are going to learn is holiday. The reason is because this is Petaluma Pete's first holiday special. So if you want to know more, come with me. The word holiday, kids, can be described as a day fixed by law or custom on which ordinary business is suspended in commemoration of some event or in honor of some person. So, we're going to honor that tradition by taking a holiday from traditional network TV and review some Petaluma Pete videos of holidays past, starting here. It was a month before Christmas when all through the town the kids were all stirring and nowhere a frown. The street signs were hung on the light posts with care in the hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were coming to see Santa deliver his holiday message by boat on the river. Peddler Pete played holiday tunes from afar while visions of Christmas tips danced in his jar. When out on the water there rose such a clatter, we sprang from our perch to see what was the matter. Away to the river we flew like a flash, where people were gathered for this annual bash. The sun on the surface of the D Street drawbridge gave a memorable view of the scene for the kids. When what to our wondering eyes should appear but a cool river boat without any reindeer, with a little old leader so lively and quick. We knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles the big boat it came, and on deck were partiers, and he called them by name. Meanwhile the holiday tunes came from Pete, for kids only who laughed while they danced in the street. The big boat was docking, and Santa came hence, while kids on the shoreline were pressed to the fence. You'd think it was Star Wars or Miley instead. 
or Elvis, or Jackson back from the dead. But no, it was Santa, the ultimate dude. It's the media maven to whom we elude. And then in a twinkling we heard on the ramp the prancing and pawing of each foot in his camp. The children were screaming, and as we turned round, up the last steps, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his feet to his shirt, and his clothes were all tarnished from riverboat dirt. The kids were now desperate, as their adults held them high. They pressed forward for photo ops and mobbed the poor guy. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. Mrs. Claus was there with him, watching his back, and fun chamber members were carrying his sack. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and we laughed when we saw him in spite of ourselves. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave us to know we had nothing to dread. The kids were now singing their carols so high, it brought peace to the city and a tear to the eye. Alright, everybody now, here we go. And as we were nearing the end of this flight, we wondered if we might hear St. Nick recite those five little words we've all learned to say that Petaluma kids repeat in so many ways. And as he was leaving, we heard him say boldly, <laughs> This is for children only. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. That's close enough. <laughs> Take a look at this image here, kids. Go get your adults again and show this image to them. This image represents a clear and simple pathway to getting our economy back on track. Ask your adults to shop small, independent businesses this holiday season, kids. Small merchants like those found in downtown Petaluma. Let's listen to some holiday music here while we take a tour of some of the downtown Petaluma merchants so your adults will get a sampling of the unique gifts they can buy from independent businesses and most of the proceeds from those sales staying right here in Petaluma. Hotel Petaluma, and we are covering for you the Petaluma Downtown Craft Mart. It's the first annual with the benefits going for COTS. You want to know what it's all about? Come with me. Now, COTS is an acronym for Committee on the Shelterless. 
That's what makes this new Petaluma Downtown Craft Mart event so special, kids, because it helps collect money for COTS, an organization that offers help and hope to homeless persons in Sonoma County by providing safe shelter and housing, helping people develop steady incomes, and helping them get back under a roof of their own. Now, this is the first time Petaluma Pete was ever inside the Hotel Petaluma, you know, it's been around since 1923, kids, and the inside architecture is just stunning. And they had it all decorated for the holidays, and one of the biggest rooms in downtown Petaluma was filled to capacity with people ten minutes after the doors opened. They also had one of the biggest tip jars Petaluma Pete has ever seen. Right there at the entrance where people put their cash donations to help cots. You know, there's no place like downtown Petaluma during the holidays, kids. And this event is just one more reason why. The crafts were everywhere and the creativity was an inspiration. So let's go shopping here and see some of the wonderful things on display while we learn a little bit more about COTS. Remember now that COTS is an acronym for Committee on the Shelterless, kids. And the rough economy has put more families just like yours out on the streets. So the money collected at this craft mart helps homeless families become stable. It also helps break the cycle of homelessness by teaching homeless parents to make their children's needs a high priority and to provide a safe, loving, and secure home for kids just like you. One of my favorite things to see at this event were these old vinyl records that were recycled into bowls and coasters. These mushroom people were also pretty cool. And one crafty merchant was selling these hats, or I guess helmets, that looked like animal heads. And there were people crafting new crafts right there on the spot, like this girl making jewelry, and this guy carving spoons and other things out of wood. They also held raffles at this event, kids, where, again, all the money collected was for the benefit of COTS. So, Petaluma Pete's hat is off to the folks who put on this downtown craft mart, kids, and to all the other good Petaluma folks who donate time and money to any organization that assists those in our community who just need a helping hand to get back on their feet. And if your adults missed this year's Downtown Craft Mart kids, tell them not to worry, because this is an annual event. So we'll see you next year, and while we're waiting, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. Merry Christmas, Petaluma! This is for kids only. This is one, two, three, two, and no, only kids allowed. Hey kids, Petaluma Pete here, and we're in downtown Petaluma today. We are at Theater Square, and we're going to learn a new word because we're going to watch the lighting of the Christmas tree. That new word is Tannenbaum. You ever heard that word before? Well, come with me. Let's find out what it's all about. Compared to most towns, kids, Petaluma is paradise. And my favorite thing is how your adults have managed to bring the old and the new together. The word Tannenbaum, by the way, means fir tree, usually referring to Christmas trees. And the first outside Christmas tree that we've seen in downtown Petaluma this year, kids, is right here in Theater Square a newer part of town where their official lighting ceremony was about to take place. Petaluma Pete got there early so we could look at this huge Tannenbaum up close. It must have taken about a hundred Christmas elves to carry and lift this thing up. This tree is so tall that they had to bolt these steel hooks right into the concrete and attach these really strong ropes on all four sides so the wind can't blow it over. We were able to see the faces in the side of the fountain. Some of these faces are friendly, and some are scary, and others are kind of silly. And there's also girl faces, and boy faces, and kid faces, and adult faces, baby faces, and wise old faces. 
and all in all, the fountain made for one of the coolest Tannenbaum stands that your adults have ever created. Later in the day, another adult placed this sign in front of the tree to let people know there was going to be a tree lighting celebration that afternoon. Sure enough, the kids started showing up with their adults and the holiday carolers were already singing their hearts out and as the crowd grew, a lot of the merchants came out into the square and started giving away all sorts of good things to eat like these free Christmas twists and a platter of cookies that brought the people running and coming back for more. And then the carolers got up on the stage and sang more holiday songs while the crowd continued to build and the kids were having a blast. Well, that about wraps it up, so let's hear with our own ears the holiday carolers sing about the Tannenbaum and then watch the countdown together. And before we forget, kids, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. I want all of you kids to come together and we're going to count down from 10 to 0 and when we hit 0, I'm going to assume someone is going to turn on the light. <laughs> Are we ready? You know how to count backwards from 10? Alright, we're ready? Count with me. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. This is paradise, so enjoy the holiday season, enjoy your downtown area, and Merry Christmas, everyone. introduce you to a new friend and his name is Bam. His full name is Bambino. But Bam is here today to introduce you to a new word and that word is shelter. You ever heard that word before? <laughs> well, come with me and let's find out what it's all about. Petaluma Pete and Bam have a couple of things in common, kids. One is that they are both turning gray, and the other is sometimes making the wrong decisions. Hey, Bam. Bam lives in L.A., and when he comes here to visit Leo and Lola, he stays on his leash like a good boy. But there was this one day when he was not wearing his tags, and he managed to escape from the house. And I mean, he booked out of there, kids running faster than a fifth grader, and he turned the corner before we even knew he was gone. And all two and a half pounds of him bolted across the dangerous street, made a brief pit stop, and continued into the great unknown before you could say Jackie Robinson, leaving us to start the heart-pounding search for the little guy. Four excruciating hours later, we get a call from the city animal shelter who saw our signs and said they think they may have the Bamster there. So we jumped in the car and we headed for the shelter, which is just off Lakeville, kids. 
where you turn into shamrock materials right there on Hopper and you just follow the road right by the railroad track there on the left and then turn right into the parking lot. Now kids, I'm here to tell you that the city of Petaluma needs to be congratulated for the cleanest, coolest, best run animal services facility that Petaluma Pete has ever visited. And the first thing we saw was this sign telling us they were open 1 to 6, Saturday 12 to 6, and closed Sunday and Monday. The second thing we saw was Kathy yeah, Sousa, so the shelter good. supervisor, unloading a litter of 10 big six-week-old puppies that were already three times the size of BAM, right, and they'd been staying at Kathy's house until old enough to be adopted. Once inside, the third thing we saw was the arrival of a stray dog in the arms of a very loving little girl who had sheltered the animal at her house for almost a week trying to find its owner. And while Jason Peach, one of the animal control officers, scanned for a chip that might be embedded in the little guy, believe it or not, the phone rang just then and the caller was asking if anyone found this very dog. And after the little girl realized she was going to have to say goodbye to her new friend, she started crying, which made Petaluma Pete cry. Anyway, Jason said that number of adoptions have really increased over the last year, perhaps because more people are staying home during the down economy and maybe decide to get a pet to warm up the house a bit. If you decide to bring your adults here, kids, you'll find all sorts of animals, including dogs, bunny rabbits, chickens, parakeets, and, of course, playful kittens all waiting for someone to adopt them for good times on the home front. This place is more, much more than just an ordinary animal shelter, kids. Jason showed us lots of very cool and caring things like these plaques up on the wall that pay special recognition to people who have donated lots of money or volunteer time to this facility. There's also these big walls filled with these tile squares that people can sponsor to place their messages on about their pets. And one of my favorite things to see was this other wall with photographs of some of the animals that were indeed adopted by a Petaluma citizen. And most importantly, there was this engraving machine right there in the lobby where people can make their own custom metal tags with the animal's name and the owner's phone number in case the little rascal gets away like Bam did. Speaking of Bam, on the way to identify the little fugitive, we saw colorful, fun, animal-themed t-shirts that were for sale and really inexpensive, with the proceeds going to help fund the shelter. This was more than just the Mr. dog Mr. pound Mr. like so many Perception other cities. This Petaluma pound. facility yeah. even yeah. offers okay. literature yeah. and training on all sorts of subjects for all sorts of animals, kids, so you and your adults can learn better ways of taking care of your pets once you adopt them and take them home. We also saw these big outside exercise areas where animals could run around and play. And they also have three different community rooms where the animals can hang out inside and goof with toys and look at pictures just like your room at home, kids. And there was this other area called the visit room where the animal and the potential adopter person could sit and get to know one another before deciding to go ahead with the relationship. Don't you wish we had one of these rooms for our adults sometime? Anyway, we finally made it to the area where there were these big holding pins where lots of very cool dogs were waiting for something, anything to happen. And we started looking for Bam, hoping against hope that he would be there so we could take him home and reunite him with Leo and Lola, who were very sad, wondering where he could be. Sure enough, there he was, and to say he was happy to see us would be the understatement of the year. Bam almost jumped out of his skin when he saw us 
and he started screaming, let me out, let me out, in dog language, until Officer Peach opened the pen, scooped him up, and brought him to us so we could sign all the necessary papers and break him out, but not before putting his tags back on. So that about wraps it up, kids. Until next time, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. And thanks to the city of Petaluma for providing such a wonderful animal services facility run by such a dedicated professional staff. Because of them, Bam is back, kids. He's back to party on and howl with the best of them. today. It's the most beautiful day of the year so far. Getting very close to Easter, so the new word, or I should say the new term that we're going to learn today is egg hunt. Have you ever heard that before? Well, come with me. Let's find out what it's all about. The Rotary Club of Petaluma Sunrise hosted their fifth annual Easter egg hunt on March 27, kids. And Petaluma Pete was there to show your adults who didn't know about this event what to expect next year should they decide to bring you to the Sonoma Marin Fairgrounds, where they will see not one, but 12,000 plastic eggs that you can open to see a prize inside. 12,000 of these things strewn over this big field in anticipation of over 1,300 Petaluma kids scooping them up. Roy's Chicago Dogs gave away over 500 hot dogs, and Extreme Pizza gave away 40 pizza pies. And the kids that were lucky enough to open eggs with numbers in them won all sorts of free stuff from bicycles to pajamas. And the adults were everywhere waiting to see their kids scramble for the winning eggs. This was without a doubt one of the nuttiest, craziest, funnest days Petaluma Pete ever saw, kids. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Now, most all the kids come away with at least one egg, and usually lots of eggs, but every once in a while there might be a few who are just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they end up with, well, a big fat goose egg. And that can be a little hard to deal with. <laughs> Luckily, there were rotary people there with extra eggs after the big wave to drop more onto the ground so that everybody came away with a smile. After the kids collect their eggs, the next step is to take them back to their adults where everyone opens the eggs and they find candy and coins and fun little toys and marbles and all sorts of things. But the best find is a piece of paper with a number on it, because this can be taken over to a prize tent and redeemed for gift certificates, games, and other great prizes. While all this was going on, there was also tables set up for kids only, with Easter-themed coloring books and 
There was free popcorn and we also had the opportunity to see inside a real fire truck and a real police car. And we saw real gymnasts performing their daring flips without a net and showing smaller kids how they do it. And they even had a real Easter Bunny there so you could have your picture taken and bring home a print of yourself. And every time you turned around, kids, there was something new to see, and it was all free. Well, that about wraps it up, kids. Until next time, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. If you had a great time, scream as loud as you can! I had a great time. I want to thank everybody for coming to our fifth annual Easter egg hunt. There's still plenty of things to do. You know, hang around. We're going to be here for about another 20 minutes or so. Um, if you're interested in Rotary and you want to do some service work like this, come check us out. We're the Petaluma Sunrise Rotary. You can go to PetalumaSunrise.org or go see the Rotary booth and get some information. We thank you guys for coming and have a great day. Heritage Homes was founded in 1967, kids, to protect the unique character of the Petaluma area by encouraging preservation and restoration of vintage buildings. To help raise funds for this noble cause, they sold tickets to a Heritage Homes Halloween Parlor Tour, where the owners of some of Petaluma's oldest dwellings were opened to the public. Now the word spook kids means to haunt, inhabit, or appear in or to as a ghost or specter. Our first stop was the Landmark Building in downtown Petaluma for tickets and a tour map, and you can believe me when I tell you that we were already getting spooked when we walked into this covered alley. So we ran away to the next destination, which was St. John's Episcopal Church, where we came upon these little candles sitting in these little brown paper bags, all lined up so we followed them around the corner where saintly apparitions were being photographed by an adult right out there on the front steps. This really spooked us so we headed down the sidewalk to the next destination on our tour map when we came across these Petaluma citizens heading in the opposite direction carrying these spooky candles. They didn't look too scared, so we felt a little safer as we rounded the corner and entered destination number three called Brainerd Bones. And this buried the needle on the spooky meter, kids. This old house was scary. Spooky music was playing. Spooky skulls were everywhere. Spooky ghosts and goblins and bony hands and shackled mummies and just all sorts of scary, frightening, creepy, chilling, terrifying, daunting, forbidding, blood-curdling, intimidating, menacing things were everywhere, so we ran away again and headed straight for the Haunted Harvest Kids, where things settled down a little bit anyway because the door was standing wide open and the first thing we saw was these big letters on the wall that said, home is where you hang your hat, witches hats of course, and where you park your broom. 
best of all, there was food there, kids. So Petaluma Pete was feeling a lot better. Halloween food like skull cakes, spookies, and lady fingers, and chocolate chip cookies. And out in the backyard, there was this meeting going on between a vampire and these two green witches and a ghost witch, all sitting around a fire made of these spooky pumpkins. Then we were scared by this Halloween scaredy cat, who was also scared, so we all got out of there and headed for the street, kids, running past this big old spooky table that had a skull on it the size of a Buick. And we couldn't get out because the exit was blocked. And there we were in the spooky graveyard, so we broke through and headed to the last destination on our tour guide called the Pumpkin Patch. And this, kids, was an old place that was lit up like it was Christmas time, only all the lights were orange and it was really starting to get dark. There was this spooky witch waiting for us at the entrance, and ghosts were everywhere. And inside, Petaluma Pete met another piano player, who was refusing to take requests unless the tune was in a minor chord. And even the bathroom was haunted with this very clean skeleton. And for the first time ever, we all learned what it was like to witness a real skeleton in a closet, which most of your adults already have, kids, and you'll have someday, too. Anyway, this Heritage Home Parlor Tour came to a close when the survivors joined together for Ghost Stories of Petaluma, kicked off by Petaluma Pete around a big bonfire at the livery stable in Steamer Landing Park. And that about wraps it up, kids. Until next time, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. Rico and Kilo are police dogs. They're heroes to us and rock stars in the dog world. We attended the 12th annual Petaluma Police Canine Trials so you could see Rico and Kilo competing with police dogs from all over California. Being true heroes, Rico and Kilo have their own following of canine groupies who are always trying to get backstage, or in this case, on the other side of the fence. We hung around the different booths looking for Rico and Kilo, but we couldn't find them anywhere. But what we did see was all sorts of support for canine police dogs. There was canine armor, canine food, canine accessories, canine fundraisers, tributes to heroic canine police dogs of the past, and my favorite booth, canine t-shirts, cups, baseball hats, and lunch bags for kids to carry to school. But still no Rico and Kilo, so we went looking for our two heroes and came across their vehicles. They had cop motors, cop tires, cop shocks, cop transmissions, and this one had Kilo's name on it, and the other one had Rico's name, but we still couldn't find our heroes. But we did see other police dogs, happy, exuberant canines, all ready to rock and roll. And then, finally, we saw hero number one. This, kids, is Kilo. Kilo. 
handled by Officer Jason Jukatan, Kilo is an intelligent, dedicated canine who works hard to protect you and your adults. And today he was ready to get out there and compete. Canine handler Officer Michael Page was then kind enough to allow us to meet hero number two. This kid's is Rico. Now Rico is a happy dude and a camera hound, and he is as sharp as jailhouse coffee. Rico is also ready to compete with other canines in several events including agility, obedience, area search, building search, and all sorts of other exercises to demonstrate how smart and well prepared these dogs are to help our Petaluma police serve and protect kids of all ages. Well, that about wraps it up, kids. So until next time, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies. Kilo, say this is for kids only. <laughs> This is only for kids, so don't you worry, grown ups, that the kids do it only. <laughs> Here and we're in downtown Petaluma today, and we're going to show you a different hat. Really different. Now, what do you suppose this is? We're about two blocks away from the downtown firehouse, and we're going to learn a new word. That word is ready. You ever heard that word before? Well, come with me, and let's find out what it's all about. Now, ready, kids, is a word that means completely prepared or in fit condition for immediate action or use. Such is the case with the downtown Petaluma Firehouse, kids, and we thought it might be fun to show you how a fire engine is more than just a big red truck that pumps water. It's also the biggest toolbox you will ever see so our firefighters will have what they need in any emergency, making them ready for anything. Now, no old firehouse is complete without a pole to slide down, kids, and this one is no exception as our new friends lead us to what they call the apparatus floor. It looks like a big garage to Petaluma Pete, but regardless, this is where we were introduced to a big, shiny fire truck. A 1986 Pierce, number 9385. This was the frontline engine up to about two years ago when it went into reserve because the new engines have computer chips. You know, they say the average life of a fire engine is 15 years. Old number 9385 here lasted 22 years and it's the only one that has a walk-through pump panel. But that's a subject for another video, kids, because we are here to show you fire engines are also the biggest toolboxes in captivity. These guys actually call this their toolbox because they need to have everything on the truck and assume there is nothing where the emergency is to help them help you. If it's a fire, sometimes firefighters have to destroy parts of a building in order to save it or save other buildings. This tool is called a pipe puller. They use it to pull down pipes and ceilings and walls or anything else they need to get out of their way. This is a Johnson bar named after a New York firefighter who invented it. And this is a Halligan, a forcible entry tool that was designed to break locks and force doors open, named after another New York firefighter. And here's a trusty old axe, kids. 
They have six pound, eight pound, some with flat heads for forcing entry into doors. They have wood handles, plastic handles. They also have shovels and sledgehammers, bolt cutters, squeegees, extra nozzles, road flares so people can see them at night, brooms for cleanup, also a lockout kit for when the next time one of your adults accidentally locks you and the keys in the car. And they call this the engineer compartment, kids. This is where they keep their spanner wrenches. Spanner wrenches are used to tighten or loosen hose caps. And hose caps connect the water hoses to the side of the truck. This toolbox holds other toolboxes with tools you see around the house, like screwdrivers and hammers and cables for night lights. And this is called a Circle D light. Circle D lights are used outside and inside during the fire and for investigations after the fire. They also carry chainsaws, so they will be ready when they need to cut holes in the roofs to let out smoke and gain access to attics from the outside. Here's another toolbox they call the medical compartment, kids. This is where they keep a heart monitor, the same kind that they keep in their ambulances. Or I guess that could be their ambuli. This electronic device can be used to restart your adult's heart after they realize they forgot to check the batteries in your home fire detectors. And look at this, kids. It's a medication road box. This box is just one more tool, and it holds things like saltwater IVs, bee sting allergy medicine, pain medicine, nitroglycerin for heart patients, the same nitroglycerin they use in dynamite, and they actually have two medication boxes, an orange one for adults and a black pediatric box for kids only. But wait, there's more. Here's a river rescue and rope rescue compartment, kids, with a personal flotation device complete with a whistle and a knife to cut rope if they have to, and my favorite, a personal beacon that flashes on and off so the rescuer can see where the rescue is taking place in the water at nighttime, because they also have a boat. That's what I call ready, kids. And you know what else? When firefighters go into a burning building, they can't breathe the air, so they also carry something that pushes a whole room full of air down into one of these small cylinders. These are self-contained breathing apparatuses, or in this case, I guess, apparati. We were told that fire can get hot enough to burn concrete, even metal kids, so they also carry different types of fire extinguishers for different types of fires, and if that isn't ready, I don't know what is. Here's another medical compartment with what they call a red bag. This is an airway bag. In here there are tubes, oxygen masks, oxygen bottles, blood pressure equipment, and even a stethoscope so they can listen to your lungs. And this is a C-spine bag with C-collars in it, which is used for when people get in automobile accidents. C-collars are used to brace your neck and help keep it stable. Well, kids, the bad news is that we are running out of time, and believe it or not, this only scratches the surface when it comes to all the tools that are carried on a Petaluma fire engine. The good news, however, is that these firefighters have agreed to let Petaluma Pete come back again and again to show you more ways that they do their best to be ready to help you whenever you need it. So until next time, kids, remember to be nice to everyone, listen to your teachers, and eat more veggies.
A friend, kids, can be described as a person attached to another by a feeling of affection or personal regard. That's the way Petaluma Pete feels about Petaluma, kids, especially downtown Petaluma, where there are always so many wonderful events and promotions going on every day. So we decided to visit three of these events on the same day, starting with little Gus and Ava's holiday party, where Petaluma Pete was invited to play, and then on to the Pelican Art Gallery for a gingerbread decorating party, and then to the Masonic Lodge for the Mentor Me Petaluma Holiday Party. The Pelican Art Gallery was putting on a gingerbread decorating event where kids and their adults could work together, dressing up little gingerbread houses that were not made of gingerbread, but clever and artsy people that they are, they were made of graham crackers, which are just as much fun to eat. This event went on all day and into the evening, kids, long after the sun went down, and it was wonderful to see Petaluma kids and their adults collaborating and spending quality time together, creating some of the coolest candy-encrusted little houses that Petaluma Pete had ever seen. They decorated the outside of the big picture window and even decorated Petaluma Pete's tip jar and everybody who participated was allowed to take their decorated gingerbread, I mean graham cracker bread houses, home with them. Earlier that same day, kids, the Mentor Me Petaluma gang was gathering at the Masonic Lodge on Western and Petaluma Boulevard, and if you or your adults have never seen the inside of this grand old building, we suggest you round them up and take them there preferably by booking their next event there, because the architecture is stunning. The kitchen is huge to accommodate a whole gaggle of people, and the location is really cool. They also have the best-sounding old antique upright piano sitting in the corner of the third floor, and if you watch real close here, you will witness how this old Gerard upright grand was somehow transformed into a Petaluma Pete honky-tonk piano through the magic of the holiday spirit. Mentor Me Petaluma is an organization with a mission to assist children in reaching their highest potential by providing them with one-to-one -one relationships with caring adult role models from the Petaluma community. They provide the mentor and the mentee a safe and supportive environment in which the two can develop a trusting relationship. Children in need getting help from Petaluma adults not just during the holiday season but year-round, and that's what we call a friend. Well, that about wraps it up, kids. But before we go, please go get your adults and ask them to take a good look at this image. This image represents one of the best ways to get our economy on track by urging our adults to shop small this holiday season and all year long by purchasing from independent merchants whenever they can. Merchants like those found in downtown Petaluma. So as we say goodbye, let's sing a holiday song along with the Mentor Me Petaluma gang and visit some of these small, independent merchants right along with the music to give your adults a sneak peek at the unique shops where they can discover gifts that are really different and enjoy the one-on-one -on -one attention of a warm, friendly person who can match their offerings with your personal needs. Here we go.
This is for kids only. This is for kids only! Is over across the bridge. Oh, yeah, we saw she was there. Oh, okay. I saw you. <laughs> Alright, you're rolling. Now, when I say go, that's when you want to go around. You know, this viewfinder is so small that I feel like you're getting cut off your head, so I have to back up to make sure I have right, your that's head. That's fine. You know, right, are we rolling? Is the red light on? Red light's on. Alright. It's on. Hey kids, Petaluma Pete here and we're in downtown Petaluma today. It's real close to New Year's and we found a new friend. His name is Jack. Hello there. And Jack has something called a slide whistle. And a slide whistle is more than a toy. It's also a musical instrument. So let's do something for the new year that Jack can play along with. What's it going to be? Let's do Old Lang Syne. You got it. Best local musician accepting the award, Petaluma Pete. Yeah. 